So CRN is an IP version of ISIS is what you, you will be seeing on the Cisco router. Though we don't have CLNS, but some commands still have that CLNS keyword when you do some verification. Without CLNS, you can still verify ISIS configuration without putting CLNS. Um, but some, some outputs are slightly different. If you want to know that, you need to put CLNS. When we get in the command line, I'll explain you those differences. Okay. Very important thing that we learned in this page is to, to form a hierarchy, OSPF uses the area, backbone area, and non-backbone area, whereas ISIS don't use the area instead. It uses L2. L2 is what going to form a transit path. L2 routers needed in order to connect areas. L2 routers needed in order to connect areas. So if you will have any area with L2 routers, now that area can act as a backbone area. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> we saw an example of what I mean here in this picture. Because there is L1, L2, L1, L2, L1, L2, 3, L1, L2 is on area 2. That can be used like backbone area. See, we don't use the terminology backbone here. Right. We can say transit. Area 2 can become a transit area to other areas like 1, 3, and 4 only if they learn the other area routes. To learn the other area routes, we learned that there should be a L2. Why is there need for L1? In area 2, why is there need for L1? Uh, in order to learn local area 2 networks, so that that can be sent in the form of L2 when it is sent to area 3, area 4, and area 1. So the reason why you got both L1 and L2 is what I'm trying to explain, I repeat. We understood why we need L2, because you need a, you have L2. The other area routes can get distributed to remote areas. Right. Why is there need for L1 here? So that the local areas can be, sorry, local networks can be learned, and it can be distributed as L2 to others. Right. Now, with the help of L1 relationship, you cannot learn other area routes. Likewise, with the help of L1, L2, I repeat, with the help of L1 here and L2, they will not form adjacency. They won't learn because they don't form adjacency. They don't learn anything. That is the reason why in all this router, you see both L1 and L2 so that it will be aware of both local network as well as other area networks. Right. Now, integrated ISIS routing. Integrated ISIS is ISIS which can be used for multiple protocols, like ISIS for IP, ISIS for connectionless network service, or ISIS for both. If you will, if you will have a router with CLNS and IP running, you can use ISIS to support both. But I never seen CLNS networks. Yeah, so let us now move on to the next slide. It uses its own PDUs, packet data unit. 
its own packet data unit to transport IP routing information updates. So it is not sent in IP packets, it is sent in the form of what? PDUs. PDUs are nothing but packets in the in ISIS. Packet data unit. They got some additional fields. They, they are not simply an IP header. They are PDUs. So for this PDUs, for this ISIS, they need CLNS address. Even if you are routing only for IP, you still need the CLNS address. That is what we call it as net ID. We'll talk about that coming slides. Now, integrated ISIS design. You know what it means? It means that you got both IP and CLNS together. So you need to properly plan for IP and see, I think this is not really needed because you don't you don't use CLNS or CLNP. Anyway, you can you still need to plan for IP. Right, right. In IP also, you 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 use two level hierarchy so that you can have scalability. For that reason, if you see here, this area. has got all L1s and only the edge router has got L1, L2. Like with this area has got all L1, only on the edge you got L1, L2. Like with every area has got only L1 and the edge router will be L2. And this area, if you see, there is only one router. And that is an L2 because the purpose of that L2 router is to get all the summary root and give only the summary root to others. That's why we need that backbone. So if you, if you watch properly, if you see closely this picture, you see this is one cloud. Yes. And do you see any area border router here? No. This is another cloud. But those L1, L2 could they be are considered not border. area border. I know, I know, but it could. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about that you know, in detail. We don't have area border router in ISIS. In, in, uh, in OSPF, you will have one router a member of area zero as well as other area. That is what we call it as area border router. Am I right? Yes, you are right. But we don't have such thing here. Every router will be within its own area boundary. Anyway, we'll talk about that a bit later. Now what I'm trying to say here is, we have a, a area with only L2 router so that this area when it summarizes and send, the summary will be received here and will be given here. All right. And the summary of this will be given here and it will be given here. One moment. What is, Assume what we don't have a connection sorry. here. I, 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 have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What is it summarizing? Routes. From? You see, when you have L2, here also L2, the networks of this L1, mm -hmm. if I have 50 network, all 50 will be sent as L2 now. But, what I can do is, I can summarize and send so that instead of 50, there will be only one round. Okay. 
so does it what what it does it automatic summarization no we need to do summarization manually oh okay but there is also something very beautiful in isi as i told you in the previous class the other area routes will not get into l1 instead you will have a default route right so that summarized network will be only here and here and here it don't go inside any of the advantage of summarization you know very well same advantage what we have in osp the updates are going to be less because they are summarized the process utilization is going to be less so uh, summarization is good now i was telling you this one earlier that isi has don't use your bandwidth to calculate the cost it won't use the bandwidth every link is 10 every link the default metric is 10 on all interface you may have ethernet you may have serial whatever are they having same bandwidth this this interfaces no they don't have same bandwidth but they are going to still have same cost 10 fixed cost 10 per link 10 per link so total metric between r1 and r3 is 20 10 right there is something called wide metric and narrow metric in iss the default is narrow metric narrow metrics are limited to 6 bit interface and 10 bit path metric please understand this very well on the interface 6 bit you got 6 means you can go from 0 to 64 isn't it to the power of 6 is what 64 mm. that's the maximum cost you can give for one one link one interface and uh, the path metric meaning the total metric between this and this cannot be more than 2 to the power of 10 What is two to the power of ten? Two to the power of ten will be somewhere one zero two four. Ten twenty four. Yes. Yeah. So the the total cost between R one and the remote destination should not go more than this. See, so if each link is ten, how many tens are inside this? Hundred, hundred and twenty, means hundred and two, hundred and two routers, isn't it? Yes. It cannot support more than one hundred and two hops. You got it? Okay. If the metric is ten, mm -hmm. and if the maximum metric in the path between the source and the destination is ten bit. Then how many how many wires in the path? Twelve wires. Each wire is ten, right. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So if you if you if you if you increase the cost, then the number of hops also will get reduced. If you leave default cost, then it is twelve routers. Sorry, one hundred and two routers. Total cost. See what I'm trying to explain you is there's something called narrow metric, which is default. 
and if you say no my network is more than one 100 hops my network is very big isp then you will enable wide metric do you understand the meaning why wide metric is needed if, when your network is very big very big or when your network is running some special services using ISA. For example, if you are running ISIS to support segment routing, then you need more metric bits. Then also you will say wide metric. I'm not going to get into those areas. Now I'm just explaining you what is narrow metric. Narrow metric is the limit which is set on interface to six bit for calculating the metric, sorry, for, for metric, six bit, bits for metric on the interface, and 10 bit for total metric between source and the destination route for the path. Now, here comes the explanation for wide metric. Now, all our operating systems are later 12.0, so, we can enable wide metric whenever you want, but again, still the default is what? Narrow. Default is narrow. If you enable wide metric, it allows 24 bit per interface and 32 bit for the path. You got it? Don't forget. Yeah. If it is wide metric on a single port, you can have metric of some million. 24 bit, no. And total is 32 bit. But if it is narrow metric, it is only 6 and 10. Don't forget this. This is something what many people do not properly learn in ISIS class. Because when we ask question on this, what is the difference between wide metric and the narrow metric, they don't have an answer. Narrow metric, limit on the interface is 6 bit. And on the path is 10 bit. Wide metric, limit on the interface is 24 bit. And in the path is 32 bit. So these many bits are used for calculating the metric. Can you decrease this cost from 10 to 5? Why not? You can decrease. You can also increase. Increase up to 64 if it is narrow metric. Is this page clear? Yes, so far. Right. Now, this is the one page that I, I was asking you to ignore on the other day. Earlier, <clears throat> even this end computers used to interact with ISIS. So they used to call it as the end system, routers as IS, intermediate system, all the stuff. So there was an ESIS relationship, ESH relationship, the end system and the host relationship, this is not needed. But in the, something I want to take from here is this one point. But it is not clearly explained here, I want to explain that. IIH means intermediate system to intermediate system halos. IIH intermediate system to intermediate system halos are sent only in between routers. So you know this one very well. There is the L1. One moment, and what is, um, one moment, and what is it? What is the interval for intermediate system to intermediate system below? Uh, the interval is, I think it is, so the hello interval is same like OSPF hello interval. Right. 
Uh, how often are SPF sends hello? 10 seconds. This also by default sends every 10 seconds. But the difference is the whole time. In OSPF, four times of hello is the whole time, 40 seconds. In ISIS, it is 30, 30 seconds. Three. Three, Sorry, seconds. three times of the hello. You can change that uh, by saying hello multiplier. You can also make it as four times, matching with OSPF if you wish. Now, what I want to show here is we don't have zero level anymore. Between N system, we don't do any association. We have L1, which we already learned. Within an area, L1. Between areas, L2. And when you are taking routes from another ISIS domain and redistributing it, it is considered to be L3. But according to me, you don't have a command called L3, so don't think about it. Don't worry about it. There is no command called L3, level 3. Nice. You have L1 and L2. Now, here are some similarities between ISIS and OSPF. Because we have learned OSPF very well, you can easily understand ISIS with the help of OSPF knowledge. Integrated ISIS and OSPF or both open standard links in protocol with the similarities like they have link state representation, aging timers, almost same. This is 30 seconds, that is 40 seconds. LSDB, link state database synchronization. SPF algorithm, updates, decision making, flooding. Instead of LSE, we call this LSP here. And then VLSM support, all these are same. Um, one question. Yes, yes. Why do they call it integrated ISIS? Is there a different one from integrated? Um, see, what we are using is an integrated ISIS, meaning it has got IP support with CLNS help. With CLNS help only, IP is supported. So it is it is integrated with CLNS. Okay. <clears throat> Even though we don't run CLNS, we use IP, we still have CLNS along with it because that's how the, the modification is done. First it was done to CLNS, then from CLNS it is modified to IP. So both are link state routing protocol, both are service provider protocol because both have got that hierarchy design, summarization, stub. In OSPF you have stub, in ISIS by default they are stub. No L2 routers are given to L1. So this all makes this protocol same, similar. They both have that uh, database for quick convergence when there is a change. Yeah, this is similarity. Do you have any question on the similarities? No, no, sir. Now, the next page will be, okay. No, uh, there is another page coming later, which will talk about the dissimilarities. Before that, let us see this one. We are trying to understand ISIS and OSPF differences in area. This is OSPF, you know this very well. Is there any question in this page? No, no question. Do we have a router common to both areas? Area zero and area two here. Do we have yes, a common have router? ABR. Yes, ABR. we have a common router. Each link belong to? an area. One link belongs to area 0, another link belongs to area 2. That is what we call as ABI. Whereas in ISIS it is like this. Is there any router common to two areas? No. 
You see, this is area zero. This is area two. There is no router common. So, what is the difference? Here, the border lies on the router. The border lies inside the router. You agree? The border lies yes. inside the router. Whereas, the border lies on the link. Isn't it? Yes. Each ISIS router belongs exactly to one area. There is no two area. No, no router member of two area. ISIS is more flexible when extended when extending the backbone, meaning when you extend L2s, this is more efficient. Advantage of integrated ISIS. See the difference between OSPF and ISIS. This is the one reason, this is one of the reasons, an important reason why I like ISIS. In OSPF, you need too many LSEs. You have too many LSEs, router LSE, network LSE, summary LSE, external LSE. Not so stubby LSE. No, a lot of lot of LSEs. In ISIS, you got only exactly. L1 and L2. That's all. L1 between the routers of same area, L2 between the routers of other areas. Yeah. So that's one advantage. Another advantage is it supports both CLNP, so connectionless network protocol, and then IP. And you may say, who cares? So, more extendable through TLVs. What is this TLV? It's type length value. Type length value is nothing but headers, fields and headers. Field fields in the header, the boxes, the fields. ISIS header is an extendable header. ISIS header is an extendable header. Whenever you want, you can add, add additional field. So that ISIS can be tuned to support new features. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, please. Yes, please. I was saying if we could um, go just maybe 10 minutes longer today, so because I'm going in a little bit later, if possible. Uh, uh. Now, uh, this is having TLVs, which is nothing but the ISIS header that can be extended. Whenever you want, you can add more fields. Whenever you don't want, you can remove those fields. So using this extendable opportunity, advantage of extending you can make use of this ISIS to support add new features, additional features, which a normal routing protocol won't support. I was telling to you, I was telling to you that ISIS was before OSI. So this protocol, has got a lot of uh, advantage. They don't simply stick into one framework. You know, yes, I have seen some people uh, when they come from some village, uh, 
maybe you know from 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 your country africa if you find someone coming from a village they will be very smart than us because they don't uh, they don't stick into the framework in us you played by rules you had all the rules to to trim you to shape you so you played by rules so you you don't think out of box when something happens but but they think out of box and they are very very smart than us when when a problem solving comes a real life problem solving their way of dealing with the problem is totally different from the way that uh civilians in a developed country i've seen that because they 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 think out of box they don't stick into the framework because they are brought up like that likewise i say is was born like that there is no framework called osi for isis so you don't say hey i cannot do this i cannot do this i'm a layer three protocol i cannot do th- no story like that for isis isis can have an additional field and it can say i'll carry mac address i can carry mac address i have no problem i'm a, i can be a layer two protocol so so you are saying isis can just run in layer two environment yes that is what fabric path I give you an example of the previous class fabric path right. in fabric path we will not have any ip address and what is the protocol there isis why do you use isis you know because we don't like spanning tree we don't like spanning tree because spanning tree blocks some port and wastes the link so to override that wastage to to fully utilize the resource i want a non blocking layer to redundant path so isis go, was introduced and it was called as fabric path it is from there that the revolution the new dimension to data center started that is how vx lan ACI, all this born from that idea, fabric path idea. Right. So you will have ISIS in a layer two level. It is because of this TLV, type length value. That's the thing I'm trying to explain you here. Extendable TLVs, extendable fields. You don't have fixed header. If you take OSI, OSPF header, we saw OSPF header. that is fix it you got version you got area id you got router id you got the checksum value authentication type uh, and then uh, interface blah blah that's all there is no place for additional information to carry but isis can carry additional information if you want by extending the so advantage of ospf ospf has got more feature like normal area stub area not so stub area default to scaled metric isis always 10 meaning ospf uses the bandwidth and calculate the cost according to the bandwidth so it's a scaled metric whereas in uh, in isis it is 10 always ospf is supported by many vendors yeah isis is not supported by many vendors the reason is the clns they do not want such protocol which is not within the framework of osi uh, but 
there is another reason why people people ignore ISIS is they find ISIS as a difficult protocol to handle. No, it is not truly difficult. It is really good to use ISIS because it's more flexible according to me. So here in the advantage, they may say, OSP has got this, this, this advantage. But I don't see these as advantage. I see this as a drawback. Why you you have a normal and then go and configure stab but not so stab? Here ISA says by default I'm a stab. You don't need to configure and do stab. I find that as an advantage, but here they want to praise OSPF in this page, so they are praising. All right, the engineers find it easier with OSPF. <laughs> That's the real reason why people are ignoring ISIS. For, for IP guys, OSPF is easy than configuring ISIS. But once they learn ISIS from me through this video, for you, it's going to be easier. ISS is going to be easier than OSP. Okay, so this chapter was about introduction to ISS. The main story that we learned here is it's a link state protocol which has got a lot of similarities with OSPF. Let's move to the next chapter. Performing ISS routing operations. OSI network layer addressing is implemented in NSAP address. I told you the ISIS was designed even before OSI. But to fit into OSI, there's a network layer addressing which will make ISIS to fit into OSI called NSAP address or NetID. NetID is the command, the keyword that we use. NSAP address is used. NSAP address identifies a system in the OSI network. So it, it makes that ISIS running router to be a part of OSI through this NSAP address. An address that represents the entire node, not just an interface. NSAP is also called as what? Net ID. So is, is um, NSAP would be like the rotor ID? Yeah. It, it also got router ID in it, and there are a few more things in it. I'll, I'll explain you when we go there. You see, okay. NSAP is 20 byte. Okay, 8 byte to 20 byte. It can be minimum 8 byte, 8 to 20 byte. And SAP or net ID is 20 byte. With this, you can do a lot of IDs, not just router ID. What does NSAP mean? NSAP stands for network um, wait means. Uh, And select is network selector. Network service access point <coughs> is to identify the system in OSI network. So you can have various NSAP formats. <coughs> now, here we see 20 bytes maximum. Minimum, 8 bytes. Eight which is also called as net ID. Now, in this 20 byte or 8 byte, whatever, the higher order bit identifies the area. When you ask me, is this router ID? I say, no, not just router ID. There are many more things in it. This is what I mean. The higher order is talking about area. 
the lower order is talking about the system, the router itself. So it has got the combination of area ID and router ID. You got it? Right. The 20 byte, the lower order bytes are talking about the router ID. Here we call the system ID. Router or system, all the same. What is ISIS? Intermediate system to intermediate system. What does that really mean? Router to router, isn't it? Router. Yeah. So, to identify a router, we have lower order bits. To identify to which area the router belongs to, we have higher order bit. This is very important for you to know. Because the next bit is going to confuse you with a lot of unwanted things. So necessary thing is here. The same thing is going to be elaborated in the next page, confusing us. So here we need to be very clear. When you have an NSAP address, it can be sized between 8, eight to 20, 20 byte. Whether it is 8 byte or 20 byte, lower order means, lower, lower order bits are to identify system. Higher order bits are to identify area. Yes, let's go next. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. This is what I was talking, they will confuse you. NSAP address, the last bit is N select. N select is nothing but network select, which is nothing but whether it is an IP version of ISIS or some other version. And to identify that, there will be there, there is one byte given. See, it's not one bit. How many? One byte. So one byte, when you write, you need to put zero, zero. It is always zero. This one byte will be always zero because IP version of N select is zero. You see here. I'll show you an example. What is this zero? This means N select. It is always zero because you are running this ISIS in an IP environment. You got it? Right. And the lower order is system ID. This is system ID. You see, it's not same. It's equivalent to router ID. And the higher order, this one is area ID. You see, area one. You see, area four. Four. And this 49 represents private network. Even if you don't put 49, it is okay. Not necessary to put 49 and say, I'm running a private network, not needed. Even without 49, it will work. Okay? So that is what you need to know. See, six byte of system ID. One byte, two byte, three, four, five, six byte. 6 byte of system ID and 2 byte of means it can be 2 to 13. Totally how much you get? 10. Okay, it can be between 2 and uh, 13. Yeah, so make sure you got 6 byte and 1 byte. Other bytes are variable. It can be extended. So the total length of NSAP is minimum eight bit by eight byte, maximum twenty byte. As I said, this forty nine means local and private, locally administered. Other things are a system N select is always zero for IP. Six byte. Here is an example. All right. So, did you understand this picture? Yes, so far. Yes, definitely. Mm. Fine. Don't worry about this end system adjacency. We don't deal with this end system anymore. Uh, it's not in the usage now. 
All right. I think we will stop here. We'll continue this in our next class. I want to do a lab before I continue. Remind me about a lab. We need to do one lab before we continue. Only then you... Okay.